Hey guys, this is another pretty neat machine I picked up not too long ago. Uh, it was a bit of an impulse buy. Grabbed this thing off eBay. Cost me a little under 50 bucks, I think, with shipping, which considering it's an AT case and what's inside it, uh, it was a pretty good deal. I didn't really need it, but uh, it was kind of an, an impulse, like I said. The one negative thing about this is there was no case cover. So, I've been thinking about getting rid of this case, but AT cases have been increase, becoming increasingly hard to find. So I just keep kind of holding out hope I'm going to come across some rotted out case and I can take the cover on it that would hopefully, you know, meet the specifications. I like the front. I really like the front of this case. Um, I just like the styling. Uh, I like the... The display and you've got you got reset power and you got a cool turbo button and I just like this case at least I like the front of it but like I said the it's missing also in shipping it the metal bowed a little bit you can see it here which it's not a big deal but anyways without further ado let's get to what's inside this which is a socket for motherboard and that's the earliest uh, Pentium motherboard. So it I know it's hard to see with a giant jumble of wires. Me. Alright, now hopefully I got the thing standing up right. Now this is how I got it. This is exactly how I got it. And as far as I can tell from talking to people that you know used these machines at the time, this was cutting edge for 1993. Um, this board may have came out in early 94. But the Pentium, uh, the original Pentium came out in 93 um, under socket 4, which is, was the new socket. It only supported two chips. There's the 60 megahertz Pentium and then the faster 66 megahertz Pentium, which is in this motherboard. Um, but it, yeah, it only supported two, two chips, the early Pentiums. And this was cutting edge. This was way cutting edge for 1993. Cost a ton of money. As far as I can tell, this setup is probably what it was installed in 1993 or 94. It doesn't look like they really upgraded it at all. Um, you can see there's the, the Pentium. It's got the fan and a heat sink. It's set by a jumper for a 60 or 66 front side bus. This is a 66 megahertz chip and it's set for 66 megahertz. You look up here, it has the infamous Dallas real-time clock. And you see it's using a lot of things that you would, you know, more expect in a 486 motherboard. Got an AT power connector, AT keyboard connector. There's no PS2 connector for a mouse. Um, 72 pin RAM. I think I have 32 or 64 megabytes installed. The total of this board, I think it's a weird number. It's like 192 megabytes, something like that. But 72 pin RAM, like I said, I think I have 64 megabytes. I'm not 100% sure. You know, hard drive, floppy drive, CD drive. Um, 1.2 megabyte floppy drive. Uh, there's, here's the cards. I'm not, it has, there's no built in. There's no built in IO controllers. There's no built in floppy controller. There's no built in hard, IDE hard drive controller. So. Um, there is one, two, three, three PCI slots and one, two, three, four 16-bit ISA slots. Uh, I always go the wrong way with that. So I'm not going to get go too much into the cards installed. This is just this card right here. It's just a standard uh, I/O controller. I have the floppy floppy hooked up and the hard drive. This is the sound card. I have the CD drive hooked up actually through the sound card. This this is just, this is a modem. I just left it in there. Um, but I will go into the sound card and the video card. So I'll start with the video card. I've already unscrewed these. So the video card is a 1994 Diamond Multimedia S3 Vision uh, 8, what is it? 868. So, uh, I think it's one or two megabytes of RAM. Again, S3, very compatible, not exactly the fastest, 
card on the block, uh, but very compatible. Kind of on the same lines as, you know, the Trio card. Uh, a lot of people I talked to in these machines, these were in like a lot of offices at the time that wanted something fast, fast Pentium, and this seemed to be the card that was in. And like I said, it's there's no 3D acceleration. It's it's an okay. It, it, these were actually considered kind of fast um, at the time. These, and then there was the Sang or Sung ET4000 and the 6000 series. And I think the Mach, ATIA Mach 64 was up there with these two. So the, these actually are good cards and pretty compatible, but I don't think these are the fastest 2D cards at the time. So this is the sound card that came with it. I'm not gonna disconnect it completely, but it's actually a Vibra. It's a Sound Blaster 16, but it's a Vibra model. Uh, one of the very the early Vibra models. And right now, as you can see by the cable, and as I said, it's running my sound card. And it actually has, a lot of the more budgety cards didn't have this, but this one does have a real Yamaha OPL chip. It's not going to focus. Oop. There we go. Yeah, there's a real Yamaha chip on this, which is nice. So you get real Yamaha uh, sound. I, a lot of people don't like the Vibra chips. I don't mind them. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit cleaner sound. I mean, it sounds different, slightly different. And some people don't like that, but I think it, it usually they introduce, they have less noise than a regular Sound Blaster 16. I, I don't really have a problem with the Vibra cards, at least not the budgety ones. This one's actually, an Acer Magic, so it's not the creative, it's like a third party creative card, I don't know. But, you know, it does the job. Uh, there's really nothing else much to say about this. Um, I think you can't see it, it's up there is the L2 cache. So we, I can't really, yes. Can't, we can't really get to it. Um, but I think this board just supports 256 uh, L2 cache. Nothing spectacular, but at least it's on there. Um, so, uh, speed wise, uh, as it is with the video card, with the, the 66 megahertz Pentium 1, uh, that's not definitely, that's non MMX. This, it's about comparable to maybe an Intel DX4, like a 100 megahertz 486. I know my, my AMD 586, which is really just a souped up 486, is faster than this. Not by too much, but it is faster than this. So the real high-end 486 machines are going to surpass this, unless what you're playing game or software is specifically coded for a Pentium or optimized for Pentium. Like Quake, this still beats uh, you know, a five, the AMD 5X86 five at 133 megahertz. It still beats it in Quake. It's only three or four frames per second, but it still beats it just because that game was optimized for a Pentium. And um, the math coprocessor built into this Pentium is still going to blow away any of the math coprocessors in a 486. So uh, let's just take a look at a couple games on this thing.
Let's rock. Damn, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. 